Here's a problem. We got force is a function of time. So 5, 10, 15 newtons applied for 5 seconds. Okay. And we want to use the impulse momentum theorem to determine the change in velocity of a 10 kilogram mass uh, uh, with the force versus time graph shown. So if you're watching this online, pause your YouTube little posy YouTube button and then work this problem out. And then unpause because I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Given. Well, what are we given here? Well, the force is constant, right? So the force is 15 newtons. And how much time is this force applied? We'll call that delta T. You can call it T or delta T. That's five seconds. Now we also know the mass of the object. It's 10 kilograms. And uh, what are we trying to find? Now you got to be really careful and read the problem carefully because it says a change in velocity. Well, that would be delta V, wouldn't it? So, uh, now there's lots of ways of doing this problem. We, we could have used the stuff we learned in, in unit four. You know, uh, Newton's second law, mass times force equals mass times acceleration. We could figure out, well, the force is 15. I know the mass is 10, so the acceleration is 1.5 meters per second squared. And then I can use the kinematic equations to figure out my change of velocity. Uh, and that'd be fine if you did that. But in, for this unit, I want to use the impulse momentum theorem, which is just as easy, if not easier, than doing all that. The impulse momentum theorem. Oh, I'm off camera. Let's see now. You who sit in the front, your job is to tell me when I'm off camera. So therefore, it's not my fault if I go off camera. All right. Um, now, so the impulse momentum theorem says this. If I apply a force for a period of time, now, this makes sense, you guys. That will cause the object to change momentum. Force times time equals a change in momentum. Now, mass times a change in velocity is a change in momentum. So remember, the definition of momentum is, is an object's mass times its velocity. Well, that means that I can all, a change in uh, momentum can be thought of as a mass times a change in that object's velocity. And this is what we're trying to find. So delta V is equal to force times time divided by mass. And notice that force divided by mass, that's really the acceleration, isn't it? And acceleration times a change in time is a change in velocity. So we're really not doing anything that we didn't do before, just expressing it a little bit differently. And so this is 15 newtons of force applied for five seconds to an object that has 10 kilograms of mass. And thus, the object will change its velocity by, well, what is 15 times 5? If you're getting out your calculator right now, please smack yourself in the head and think. This is, what's 5 times 5? 25. What's 5 times 10? 50. What's 50 plus 25? 75. What's 75 divided by 10? 7.5. And what should the units here be? Well, what is delta V? That is a change in velocity. OK, what units does velocity have? And we can check that. Uh, what's a newton? A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. Those are the fundamental units for newtons. Times seconds divided by kilograms. Um, look at, let me zoom in, because I know you can't see it in the back. And when you do this, a kilogram cancels a kilogram, the seconds cancels the seconds, and I'm left with meters per second. Woohoo! That's always a great way to check to see if you've arranged the formula correctly. You know, have you done the math right? Well, if the units work out, that's a good sign. It doesn't mean you did it 
right, but it means you probably did it right. And there's my answer. Okay. <laughs>